The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 16th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading up 10 points, 27,369. Uh, S&P's off 5, NASDAQ 100 off 25 points. That's about 3 tenths percent to the downside. The Russell's up 3 points. Semis are off 13. That's 9 tenths of a percent to the downside. Spot volatility index is off 6 pennies. Gold's uh, flat. Silver's up 33 cents. That's 2 percent to the upside leading the charge. The upside it is booking holdings up $10 and change. Canadian Pacific Railway up 8 Roku up seven and change to the downside Domino's Pizza. Mm. Off 20 buckaroonies out there. Uh, Factset Research is down. That's about 7%, by the way. Factset Research off 3% and change, uh, about $10 to the downside. A gap to the downside. Mercado Libre off 10. So let's begin with, hey, what are the markets uh, doing as of 1 o'clock? We saw the markets sell off. A little bit of a sell-off, it will call it that. Uh, but while all that was taking place at that stage, well, let me just show it to you visually, was a test of support. Now, we're talking short-term support. We're really talking a test of a breakout area. The breakout area here was at 3,550, established by this red horizontal line. For those of you that are tracking the TD setup nine count, both for resistance and support out here, you knew that as the pullback, it, in order for there to be at a minimum some type of change in trend, you must see support being broken. In this case here, what we're doing to measure support is the breakout area. So 3,550 price came down there and held that level. Unless we see price close under 3,550, all that was going on was a test of support. Now, it doesn't just really stop there. We don't just take a look at the 30-minute chart for the ES Mini. We can go take a look at the NQ. We pulled the NQ out here. What we're going to see is that as price was moving lower, it was also creating a TD setup nine count. Now, it's on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine, where you can see that change in trend, or in other words, in this case here, the low. Well, that is what has transpired so far in the 30-minute time frame chart for the NQ. Q. Now, the cool thing is, is that the tools here that you and I look at for a 30-minute chart work on a two-minute chart, a daily chart, a weekly chart, so on and so forth. If we take a look at the Dow equity futures, you're going to see just nothing but strength here. If we take a look at the Dow, first of all, the level of support that you would need to see a close below is 27,216. That is the last. Now, there may be a new setup that takes place out here over the course of the next many hours. But at this stage here, it's 27 to 16. Price never even got down anywhere near close to that level inside the Dow equity futures contract. Why is that? 
The reason why and what makes this market so difficult in calling a top is because of the global flow of capital that continues to pour into the U.S. Whether it's pouring into the U.S. via the U.S. stock market, whether it's via bonds or whether it's by the U.S. dollar, it kind of flip-flops from day to day, but folks around the globe are trying, big, big money folks, are trying to get their currency lined up behind the U.S. dollar, and there's several ways in order to do that. So there was a bit of a conversation that I was adding to in the Tiger's Den. You see, we can see this. You do not have to believe a gosh darn thing I say. All you have to do is believe the charts and the data, because that's really all that I'm reporting to you. I'm nothing more than really just a, a, a commentator that is commentating on exactly what the charts are doing. The lines, the numbers that we put in here that we showed on a 30-minute basis with regard to what is going on inside the markets, where is price headed back to, those are ob objective if you believe in those patterns. If you watch these patterns enough, you start to believe. This here is nothing more than a data set. It's a data set that, in essence, it's a weekly time frame. It goes back, it goes back to the lows, the last major low across the globe. In the U.S., we know that that happened to be on the day following Christmas, on December 26th. Now, I have to use a weekly time frame. So, in essence, I'm going back 30 weeks here. You can do the same thing, and we're measuring the rate of change. Now, the rate of change that you and I measure must, underscore, must, be in the major currencies out there. The major currencies being the euro, the yen, and the pound, and then, of course, the U.S. dollar index. This chart here, if we go back for the last 30 weeks, what you will see is that the winner, 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 chicken dinner, is still the U.S. The S&P has had a one, has had a 30-week rate of change of 24%. The Dow, looking at the futures out here, is up 22%. You start scanning the globe out here because that, in essence, is what has taken place. Other than the Australian index out here, which is up 20%, every other index is, 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 is about half of what we've seen as far as movement into the U.S. What this is showing you, look, here's the deal. We've seen a great movement, let's say in the S&P 500, at 24% in terms of U.S. dollars. In terms of euros, it's 26%. What else on this chart can you find in terms of euros that has moved 26%? I'll save you the time. Nothing. Light sweet crude is close. It's at 25.93, but that's on the commodity side out there. Nothing wrong with that, but it, the global flow of capital is coming here. This is why the Fed is wants to reduce rates. They are trying to stem off this global flow of capital. They're not going to be able to do it. I don't care what they reduce interest rates to. Do you really care what interest rates are if you're trying to get out of your currency? Really? Is a half a point or a quarter point going to make the difference in the world? Is that really going to stop the global flow of capital? No. But they're not going to tell you this story. They don't need to tell you this story. I don't need to tell you this story. All you need to do is just go ahead and take a look at instruments priced in the major currencies. That tells us the story. And that is why this market right now, it's so difficult to identify a top. But we're still going to try to do that. We'll go take a look at the daily time frame charts. We'll take a look at the lines of demarcation where price needs to close below for that potential top to actually form. He wrote with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first question uh, coming in early this morning from LC. LC wants to take a look at uh, potential price projections for new gold. NGD is a ticker symbol there in El Dorado Gold, EGO. So let's go take a look at those. First, you're looking for price projections. I want you to I want to make sure that you focus on the overall index, the gold and silver bugs index, the XAU out here. What I want you to be paying attention to is the fact that price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy part of the roads momentum indicator topping pattern when you take a look at the xau that is how it formed its bottom out here and now it's doing the same thing at a top now in order for the bottom to have formed you needed a bullish reversal signal that was a bullish engulfing candle that formed uh, right back here it looks like on uh, may the 30th what was being needed here is a bearish reversal signal. So we don't have that. But LC, I want you to pay attention to this because if you get that topping signal out here and you're going to stay in those equities, even with the, what, regardless of the price uh, projections that I might give you, you're saying that these individual equities are going to be stronger than the index. So be careful. Be careful out here. Don't have to be careful today. Although you do, I don't know what the end of day session is going to look like. I don't know whether we're going to have a bearish reversal signal today or not. That I don't know, but you'll want to be paying attention to that. Now, specifically to your request out here, let's go take a look at if we were going to ignore that, which you and I are not going to ignore that. We are not going to ignore the larger picture out here. We just can't. But if we do take a look at NGD and we begin with that and we take a look at uh, patterns out here um, on the daily time frame, I don't have a, a level to give you a price projection just yet. We'll come back to it here. What we can see is that today is going to be day number seven of a TD setup nine count. Remember, it's bar eight, nine, or the bar following nine can be the top of that pattern. Last time that there was a TD setup nine count on the way up here for new gold, it took place on June 14th. It was the slightly higher high that took place on the 15th that created that TD setup nine count. Now, price pulled all the way back to support. In this case here, support was the bottom of its profile. That was a June 20th low, and then things took off from there. Whenever you get a top, 
or a bottom signal. It says that in the case of a top, you're going to pull back to support. In the case of a uh, bottom, you're going to pull back into resistance. We don't know whether those levels will clear or not. In the case of um, NGD, it was 90 cents. That was set up by this little TD setup. That was where price had broken down. Once price got above that, it was off to the upside out here. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for new gold, let's just pull that over here, get a feel for what we've got. You can see that it's trading right in the top of its weekly profile. It's slightly above it. The weekly box is, looks like around 127. Uh, you're trading at 131, so price is up at resistance. Hey, if things are all great and uh, things are going to be able to clear this level, then they could move to 218. 218 is the next resistance area. That's the next breakdown level on a weekly basis for new gold. But be careful. Really, it's a weekly chart. I don't know what the week looks like, but if price closes back below 127, you know that that was a strong resistance area. If you're asking me where, so be, be careful out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart for new gold, it's trading into the top of its monthly profile right at the 131 level. Now, if things can take off from here on the larger picture, you're looking at about 356. That's where the breakdown began inside of new gold on a monthly basis. Your other request out there was for EGO. EGO is a ticker symbol. Here, just to make it quick with regard to profiles, we'll come over here. We'll see that uh, El Dorado El Dorado Gold is up above its daily, its weekly, and trading into the top of its uh, quarterly profile. That's at $7.43 out there. So that's a resistance level that you'll want to watch. You're trading at $7.18. From the daily perspective, it too is going to go ahead and create bar number seven of a TD setup nine count out here. So be on the lookout for a potential top. Um, coming to a screen near you over the course of the next couple days. Today, you happen to be in wave number six. That's letter F on my screen out here. So the earliest possible that wave number seven could form would be today's Tuesday, Wednesday would be Thursday. You wouldn't know that till Friday. I'm not using that as a forecast. You just have to let this pattern play out. So there's two potential topping signals that patterns that may be forming we don't know if they're going to form or not inside of el dorado gold if i take a look at the weekly time frame chart again for a price projection 735 is the nut that is where that td setup breakdown uh the, the the second one in essence began so 735 you're at 721 that becomes my price projection for you so lc best of luck with those trades pay attention to the xau with regard to how it uh, forms its candle sessions over the course of the next couple of days out here. Another question coming in from Tim M. Tim wants to take a look at ECA as a ticker. So I believe that is Econa, but uh, let's not uh, guess. Let's go see what it is. And let's look for its uh, TAS market profiles, both on a daily, weekly, monthly, as well as quarterly base. So what we can see here about Econa, what are you looking for? You gave me some great advice when I went into ECA earlier. Well, that's great to know. What do you think about entering again? I think that now is not the time. Well, at least on this set of charts. We're going to go to Stevie's other charts as well. But here what we know, uh, Tim, is that price is below the daily box, below the weekly box at this moment, below the quarterly box. And this says we're going back. This equity is going back to previous lows out here, previous swing points. But let's go take a look at the other patterns that might be in play out here. We take a look at the daily time frame chart. Um, you can see where the last bullish candle formed. By the way, there was a, a nice uh, road momentum indicator bottom signal that piercing candle on June 18th out there so let's go to the weekly time frame chart I don't know if that is going to hold or not I don't have a pattern associated with it other than a test of a prior swing point is it with volume or lighter volume well the volume down there on June 17th was 18.5 million shares you're at 14 million shares Tim this equity is pushing lower with volume this says don't even think about it well, you can think about it, but I'm saying, hey, don't even think about it. Now, on a, this is really interesting. See, nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern here. Now, we didn't get the bullish reversal signal. You didn't get the TD9 count set up. That, was, that is what had made the low, still has made the low. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here. But what we saw was just simply a bounce up to where? Where both buyers and sellers believed that there was fair value with the weekly time frame. That was the center of its box at 528. Price has moved down from there. Now, where's price headed to? Let's take a look at the uh, monthly chart here for uh, Encana. 
uh, see if we can see anything out here. And the only thing we see, the prior swing point takes you back into the 2016 time frame, that low around three bucks. And I'm not saying that three bucks is going to hold this thing up. And Kana wants lower price. Now is definitely not the time to take a long position there. Look elsewhere, Tim, when it comes to putting your shekels to work. LB writes in and says, hey, Steve, I'm looking to establish a position in uh, GBTC. I believe that is the Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, out here. Can we give you a price target? So let's just stay with the ETF. Of course, as you know, uh, you've got to go take a look at what's going on inside of Bitcoin out here. If we take a look at GBTC, uh, here's one thing that you know, we know. There's a bear structured profile that price is trading in, right, in right now. And the bears are the sellers to be able to push price down towards the bottom of that box. That was at 12.51. The low today has been 12.65. So that's a level that you're going to want to watch. You're saying you want to establish a long position there. Let's look at the other charts here that show the other patterns that are in play. And what we can see here is a road momentum in indicator top. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Now, that was a pretty strategic pause on my part, not paying attention to the uh, clock out there, and it went out right at my last word. We're taking a look at uh, we're taking a look at GBTC. Of course, on the screen right now happens to be uh, Bitcoin futures. Their level of support, the bottom of its box, is 96.12. 
Um, we're trading right now in 97.60. But let's put the uh, and and Lee's question was he's looking where to where to get in and get short this. Now, Lee, what we saw out here, so you got this rose momentum top. You had that uh, confirmed with the gap to the downside on June 28th, and then as price bounced back up into that level, you had that big old bearish engulfing key reversal session on July 11. Now, what price has done, it's come back and tested support. So now it's not the time to go ahead and take that short position. In the case of GBT. If you're trying to take a short, I'd at least wait for price to get up towards Stevie's green line. That's at 1540. It's a bear structured box out there. Buyers and sellers believe there's fair value at 1562. That would be your range 1540, 1562, as high as 1665 on that position. So best of luck with regard to that a trade out there. Let me see if there's any other questions before we just go on. Looks like, oh yeah, Chris B wrote in. So if you, you keep firing away the questions, folks, and and uh, we'll just, this small this show will just simply run smoothly here. And uh, Chris B is looking at uh, your long Nokia. N-O-K is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go ahead and punch that up on the screen and finish reading the question here for Chris. And Chris says, I'm long Nokia. Is it at the top of the channel today? What are your thoughts on where it's going by the end of 2019? Huh. Man, let's just, uh, let's just, uh, that, that's a tough one. But let's take a look at what it's doing today, what it's trading into, what are the patterns, anything to be uh, concerned with. So here's what we know from a daily, weekly, monthly set of profiles. We know the price is above the daily top of its box, which is 502. Says you don't want to see this thing close below 498. Uh, it is traded right into, on a weekly basis, this week, specifically 521. The actual high this week, let me see what's, what's the actual high, 521. And at 521, that happens to be the center of a bearish structured weekly profile here. So what you're looking for, Chris, is you're really looking for price to get above 521. Again, both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value right there. If you get above that, then it says that, okay, maybe buyers have a little bit of an edge in this bearish structured profile and can push price to 546. So 546 would be one of the price projections. We would not give you that or say that that's where price is headed to until we see price truly clear, close above 521. I'm not talking 522. I'm not sure exactly what number I'm talking, but you would see that in the bar. We'd have to take a look at the bar, see how things traded. But right now you're up against resistance. It happens to be that at 523, that's the bottom of its monthly profile, 523. So you really need to see on a monthly basis a close above that level. If you do, then 570 is the first number, and then 649 is what you would be looking at. But right now, and let's take a look at the daily. I don't see any type of signal here. Just a sideways consolidation over the period of the last many weeks out here since the early part of May. So no topping pattern, just accumulation, it appears, that's going on. So nothing really interesting out here with regard to uh, Nokia. As far as the bottom, uh, is there any type of bottom pattern or signal that was associated with that bottom? Nothing that I come up with immediately in taking a look at the daily time frame chart for you. Longer term, is there anything? If I look at the weekly chart, uh, the answer is, yeah, it formed a bottom as well as a top, quite frankly, with the uh, TD setup nine count. So when it formed the top back in February 2019, it was bar number eight. Remember, it's bar number eight, nine, or the bar following nine. That can be that change in trend signal. Well, when this bottomed back here on a weekly basis, uh, that was on May 17th, 2019, it was with a TD setup nine count. Now, the beauty, what you like about this week, is that price is above Stevie's red line, 512. You'd really like to see price close over that. Uh, if it doesn't close over that, just tells you about this story that it's really struggling to get over resistance areas, and that price could even move back to the 484 number out there. So the weekly says, uh, okay, I can see a potential bottom. The daily says we're just consolidating sideways. Not a lot really going on there. Uh, you are up at resistance on the, or a resistance level on the weekly, and certainly the resistance level on the monthly, which is 523. So best of luck with that trade. Uh, we've got a request inside the Tiger's Den to go take a look at, uh, that was for Chris uh, B, by the way, uh, uh, to take a look at uh, Google. So let's go take a look at G-O-O-G, uh, see what it is uh, doing. 
uh, G-O-O-G. Let's punch that in on the other system. Right now, it's trading out 11.53. It's above the daily, trading into the same resistance level that we just looked at for Nokia, which was the center of its weekly profile. That measures out at 11.57.13. The high today, 11.58.58. You're trading at 11.53 right now. So you are long... Uh, what's your, my opinion? Oh, yeah, you're long Google. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at Google and see what else we can find out here. So yesterday was the bar following bar number nine. Bar eight was the actual high. Today, a higher high. So the TD9 count is not going to be a pattern that we're going to say is going to identify the top out here because we're just going to just simply do it by the numbers. You're in wave number seven, six, that is, letter F out there. So be careful over the next couple of days if wave number seven, letter G, forms out here. And especially if it forms and you get a close below 1158.52, that is the resistance area. That is the breakdown area. When Google last broke down, we didn't know that at the time. We didn't know it till the TD setup nine count finished, which, by the way, called the bottom out here. You're sort of getting the picture out here with regard to this uh, set of uh, uh, tools that you and I use out here. We just did it on a 30-minute basis. We've done it on multiple charts out here, multiple time frames. And dang, I can say dang, if it doesn't really assist you with understanding what the message of the markets is. So right now, the message of the market is that Google has done nothing more than bounce up to where price broke down. Remember, Tom would teach you, because he taught me this, one of the very first lessons out here, is don't chase something. If something's off the bottom, and it's off the bottom with wide price spread, uh, accelerated volume, let it pull back to where it broke out from, or a breakout area. Now we've got market profiles that I didn't have when Tom was teaching me that. I've got the TD set up nine count to identify exactly where breakouts or breakdowns refer to, as well as some other patterns that I've added along the way out here. So this says 1158, Satish, is the area that you want to see price close above with regard to Google. So far, it's really been a counter trend rally to take you back to a prior level of resistance, the breakdown area. If price can get above that, and if price can get above the weekly center of its box, 1157, well then what price could be doing is moving back to its weekly breakdown level, and that's its all time high at the 1289.27 area. So uh, that's what I see when I take a look at uh, googly one, and I hope that helps you out. John in the Tiger's Den wants to see if there's any support levels for the British pound. So for the British pound, let me see if I can do this out here. Let's put this up. We will. Now, there's going to be a slight delay on this chart. So you're looking for support. And I got to start with uh, this chart here for the monthly time frame. See if I've got anything here for support. And I'll continue this venture as we go into this break right here. Taking at the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. Looks like it's headed back to its lows from back in uh, 2016. We'll be right back. Maybe even lower than that. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So for John and the Tigers, Den, uh, we're taking a look at the uh, Great British Pound U.S. dollar. Um, what I did, John, was I needed to go back to the quarterly time frame just to try to squeeze everything. Interesting, interestingly enough, on a quarterly basis, when the Great British Pound made its bottom back in 1980, well, that's just 2016. Um, yeah, 2016. I, that, that's true. Um, what it did, it did it with a, uh, it did it with a TD setup nine count bar. Interestingly enough, there. Now let's pull this other chart over here, just simply because it uh, got more data, and uh, we can get a feel for for what to be watching for. So you were asking for support, and support I would have to say would be right here, right now, or very close to it, which is 1.2337. We're trading just slightly above that at the 124 area, and at that, that happens to be the bottom of its quarterly profile. It's bullish in structure, so nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern out here if price closes below that level. But then what we know is that price should, at a minimum, go test those 216 lows, 2016 lows at the 119 level. But I would say if you close below the bottom of the box, because when that candle was formed that low, it didn't have that profile that was in place. I would say more likely than not, if you see a close below this 1.2337 level, you're headed back to the 1985 area. Perhaps the 1985 lows at a buck five. Folks, I haven't been over to London for a long time, but the last time that I was there, it was about two for one. Two for one. That's right. My dollar was worth half. And the menus didn't change. It is time. It is time to take a trip. Especially if you're a golfer, and we got the uh, a British Open, got the Open Championship uh, this weekend. Uh, the guys in the U.S. must be loving it from a currency standpoint. Never been cheaper. Well, I can't say that. It was cheaper. That was back in 1985. So time to party like it's 1985 over in uh, London town. That's all I see, John, with regard to... Uh, with regard to what the Great British Pound is uh, doing out there, I hope that that uh, helps you out. Let me just check, see if there's any other questions that have uh, come in. And if not, then we'll just go to the general markets out there. So that was Chris's question. And uh, no, I don't see anything else. Okay, so uh, let's go take a look at the general markets. Uh, what, what is it that we want to watch today? Let me start by going and taking a look at the cash indices out here. Um, because we can do that, and there's some very important topping signals for you and I to pay attention to. Let's begin by taking a look at the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ composite today is going to complete, or it appears that it's going to complete, wave number seven. That is letter G. Now, I don't know if you believe in coincidences, and if you do, you've got to ask yourself, is this a coincidence? 
What's the coincidence? Well, the last time that the NASDAQ composite formed its top, it was with wave number seven. It was Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G. That took place right out here on April 29th. Now, what took place on the following session that hasn't taken place yet, which also needs to take place, is a close below Stevie's green line. That's at 81.99 and change out there. We'll just call it 81.99. Price must close below that. Otherwise, this is nothing more. I don't care that it's got wave number seven there. You still have to at least break through support, at least one level of support out here. And inside the NASDAQ composite, it would at least be Stevie's green line. Closing below that says, hey, at least we got a retracement that would be going on. That retracement may simply take you back to where price broke out on the NASDAQ composite. If I was going to ask you where it broke out, most people would have gone back to the swing point, would have gone back to June 25th. I would have done that. I don't do that anymore. I pay attention to that swing point, but I recognize that's not where the breakout actually began inside the NASDAQ composite. Instead, it was at the number of 7961.46. So we've got a topping confirmed pattern out here. We really do. You've got wave number seven. What we haven't seen is we haven't seen the, the, the back of the buyers broken yet by simply closing below Stevie's green line. So we'll pay attention to the NASDAQ composite. If we take a look at other indices that have a top, nice move today in the Dow Transports, up 204 points out there. Should you buy it? Heck no. Heavens to Betsy, no. All that's taken place today is we are now, it is now in wave number seven. That is letter G out here. That doesn't mean that it can't extend to tomorrow and the next day, and it's been a nice move. But just so you know, you're in wave number seven inside the Dow Transports. It's not confirmed yet, not like the NASDAQ composite, at least as a 147, because of the lower high today versus yesterday. But that's what I see. Hey, we've got a caller on the line. It's Brent from Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Doing very well, Steve. How about yourself? Uh, also doing well. Um, so you want to take a look at uh, Lightsweed Crude. Tell me what you're doing, how I can best assist you. I sent you an email, but maybe it didn't get through to you. It's, it's, mm. uh, I have no problem calling and talking to you. I just enjoy that. It Great. looks like it took a bit of a hit here, and I thought you had given a level here recently of 58 and change. I don't remember the exact number. That if, if, if it breached that, or just wanted to get your thoughts on that, your analysis, if you could. I know that time's getting a little short. Absolutely. Okay. So if we take a look at Lightsweed Crew, we've got the uh, daily chart up on my screen out here. And um, one level would have been the 59.17 to 58.98 area. Those were the tops of the weekly and then daily box. It looks like, Brent, that uh, Lightsweed Crude is headed towards 50. 653. Now, the bar on my screen as of 148 is a gold colored bar, and that indicates that there may be, may be a new profile forming, so new levels of support or resistance. We have to go with what we have right now. So, if you're short, you're looking for price to close below 56.53 at this stage. If that occurs, then the price target, the downside price target, would be the bottom of that weekly profile or the point of control, the center. So, that's between 52.19 and 53. Uh, 58. If I look for topping signals out here on the uh, daily time frame, uh, I really don't have anything per se just yet. I don't, not just yet. I don't have, why well, won't this work for me? I don't have anything. I'm just looking for what was the wave count to the upside just to make sure. Yeah, so I don't see anything other than the fact that it made wave number four on the daily. Um, yeah, that's really all that I've got uh, for you as I speak right now. Does that does that help you out, or what? What? It, what? Tell me what you're targeting. What are you looking at? I don't have a position. I just saw the movement. I just was wondering if there was something that beyond just the actual move that that you know indicated it might be some kind of a top. And with your counts, that's what I wanted to see, which I appreciate. Got it. Um, okay. Okay. No, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> other than wave number four, and you and I, you know, we followed Basil long enough to know that uh, when it gets to letter D, and here's the daily time frame chart out here, the hair on the back of his neck stands up. And so in this case here, rightfully so, but but we would say that price needs to close below that 56.53 area. If it does that, uh, then that move lower into the 51, 52 range would be likely. <sighs> Okay, that's great, Steve. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the call and, you know, getting that in.
in the show before it's over. Take care. Huh? My pleasure. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Dow down 10, S&P off 9. Uh, we get back to this break during that two-minute wrap. Let's finish off by taking a look at some of those indices out here. Some numbers for you to watch coming into the close. Uh, levels of support that must be broken that would confirm odds favor a change in trend. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. We'll take a look at the uh, cash indices out here looking for levels uh, to be paying attention to. What we know about the S&P 500 is prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. That creates that rose momentum indicator pattern. Uh, right now, as of 154, and I don't know what the session looks like at 4 p.m., but right now you do have a bearish reversal candle. So you've got that next element of that rose momentum indicator signal. The other element, the final element, not the final, but, but the next element here to indicate a time would be a close below Stevie's green line. We can see how that level was tested. Um, let me see if I can give, I can. I, I just have to pull up a data box and uh, so see what that exact number is. It's hidden. We're not going to hide it. It's 3002.29 to be exact, but just use 3002. If we see a close below that inside of the S&P 500, it's going to signal a change in trend. You can see it got up to wave number seven. That's letter F with that pattern. If this level holds of support, Stevie's green line, 
You could see tomorrow just some uh, over, you know, you could see a quick push to wave number seven, letter G. And still with this uh, roads and indicator topping signal in place out here. So that's what's going on with the S&P 500. Inside the NASDAQ 100, what we know is that yesterday was the, uh, what should be the extent of that TD setup nine count, if that is going to identify the top. Tops can occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Well, yesterday was the bar following nine. You would need to see a close below 78.97 in change. We'll just call it 78.97 to, in fact, confirm that pattern. That's Stevie's green line. So that's something to be paying attention attention to uh, for the rest of the day. So folks, it's been a, I uh, appreciate everybody sending in those emails. It just makes the show much easier. Everybody inside the Tiger's Den, thanks for doing that. Brent, for your call out there, always makes the show go a whole heck of a lot easier. By the way, the sectors inside the S&P that have those same topping signals, the XLK, just like the NDX 100 and the XLC. That's the communication sector. That's like Facebook and so on and so forth out there. So, folks, have a great Tuesday. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned. Another great hour brought to you by the one and only Polar Bear. And then Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Take care. See you soon.